Morning everybody, David Shapiro here with a new video. So you probably notice a little bit of a different setup. I'm kind of pimping out my, uh, my recording setup. But today we're going to talk about um, the OpenAI de Democratic Inputs to AI and the Gato Framework. So you guys have heard me mention the Gato Framework quite a few times. So we're going to uh, kind of first kind of talk about like this democratic inputs to AI, which is a grant challenge. And then I'll also introduce you to the Gato framework, which there is some overlap. But the takeaway is that uh, I and the Gato community are going to uh, put in a um, uh, proposal to uh, open AI's challenge. So right off the bat, the democratic inputs to AI is uh, going to be 10 $100,000 grants that OpenAI gives in order to basically democratize the way that they get feedback uh, in order to, to decide how AI will behave. So they give some examples of what they mean by democratic process, uh, and then they also give a few examples of the kinds of questions that they're going to want to um, uh, address. Sorry, where did it go? Here we go. So one example is, how far do you think the personalization of AI assistants like ChatGPT uh, to align with tastes and preferences should go? What boundaries, if any, should exist in this process? So these are the kinds of policy questions that they want to have a scalable system to address. And uh, they give you know a, quite a few examples like Wikipedia, Twitter, uh, Democracy Next, so on and so forth. So there's all kinds of things uh, which with those existing systems, you might be asking like, okay, well, why? What's like, what's missing? And so there's a few things that they talk about that they want to, uh, like the, the criteria that they want to address. So one, evaluation. They want to make sure that the evaluation follows uh, metrics uh, and so on, that the methodology is good. Uh, robustness, obviously you want to uh, make sure that, that the resulting information that you get is robust and defensible, uh, but also resistant to trolling and other problems. Um, inclusiveness and representativeness. Uh, you know, obviously, if you only survey or poll, you know, a small majority of, of people, or I guess small minority of people, rather, uh, you're not going to have a good representation of the global willpower and global desires of all humans. And that's part of the goal here is that uh, pretty much all humans are stakeholders in AI. So therefore we need to make sure that we represent everyone on the planet. Um, empowerment of minority opinions. So this is uh, one of the hardest problems because when you have a democratic process, you often have majority rules which means that you have tyranny of the majority. So how do you represent the interests of everyone while also um, kind of abiding by or following the collective willpower? So in that case, finding consensus can be very difficult. Uh, effective moderation, again, making sure that stuff stays on topic, so on and so forth. Scalability, so again, um, scalability is one of the chief criteria here because it needs to encompass the entire planet. Um, finally, actionability and legibility. These are just kind of <laughs> boilerplate requirements. Um, there's a few other footnotes. Um, but yeah, so those are the primary goals is how do you create something that can achieve this? And it sounds like a very daunting task, but I think that we're up to it. Um, so with all that said, um, uh, the Gato community and actually even some of my Patreons have already uh, expressed interest in participating. So we'll get that organized very quickly. We have until uh, just under a month from now to submit our proposal, which I have no doubt that we'll be able to do considering we pulled the Gato framework together in four weeks flat. So we have roughly the same amount of time to do something that is less extensive. Basically, we have to design one tool or one platform rather than an entire global movement. So I have alluded to the Gato framework quite a few times, so let's talk about the Gato framework. So you can learn about our Gato framework here on gatoframework.org. It is a global decentralized movement to achieve, uh, first and foremost, utopia, which we define utopia uh, quite simply as uh, a world state where everyone on the planet has high standard of living, uh, high uh, individual liberty, and also high social mobility. 
So obviously the word utopia often has a lot of baggage associated with it. Uh, you know, whether you think Star Trek or something else and utopia means different things to different people, but in terms of universal principles and also measurable like uh, KPI or metrics, uh, we, we define utopia as, uh, you know, high standard of living, uh, high individual liberty and high social mobility. If we get those three criteria to be global, we will consider that success. Now, also Gato is meant to avoid dystopia. So on one hand, you have utopia versus dystopia, but we also aim to avoid cataclysmic outcomes by solving problems such as the coordination problem that Daniel Schmachtenberger and Liv Bowery talk about with Moloch. You've probably seen some of my other videos. And the goal there is to avoid extinction by creating global consensus around how to align AI, which is a very comprehensive process. We'll, we'll go into it just a little bit. Um, but basically, it is a decentralized, layered approach to achieving global alignment. So, for instance, the first layer is model alignment. Model alignment is the low-level thing, such as building and training and fine-tuning uh, individual language models and other AI models, multimodal models as they come. So we'll address problems like fine-tuning, MESA optimization, inner alignment, and so on. But it's important to remember that model alignment is only one small component of achieving utopia, avoiding dystopia, and avoiding extinction. Yes, we, uh, we believe that there will come a time when AI becomes super intelligent and it cannot be contained, and we have to get it right before that happens. But even before that, we could end up in dystopia, right? So there's kind of a, a gated process. So model alignment, um, even Sam Altman has said that RLHF is not the, not the way to get, you know, uh, solve the control problem, but it's a good way to make a good chatbot. So we're aligned there. The next phase is autonomous systems. So one thing that a lot of people are afraid of in the long run is runaway autonomous AI, basically super intelligence that has no leash, that has no shackles. And so one of the reasons that we advocate for building autonomous systems today is because we need to practice uh, building these systems to understand the architectures and the behaviors. For instance, one of the things that people suspect will happen is instrumental convergence. Instrumental convergence is the idea that uh, AI systems, no matter what objectives you give them, they will want things like to protect power, to get more data, that sort of stuff. And so by, by practicing building autonomous systems today, we can go ahead and start researching and understanding, one, how to make autonomous systems stable, even as they change and improve themselves. We can also figure out what needs to go into automating their internal learning processes and stuff because super intelligence was never ever going to be a single model, right? It's not gonna be GPT-7, you know, in a robot. Uh, autonomous systems from a software and hardware perspective are going to be very complex systems. So we need to start working on these today. And, you know, in point of fact, people have already started working on auton autonomous systems and they're only gonna get more powerful over time. Layer three of the Gato framework is the advocacy of using uh, decentralized technologies such as blockchain and federations in order to uh, basically first solve the problem of in the future, AI will spend more time talking to each other than to us. So we need to create a framework that includes things such as consensus mechanisms as well as reputation uh, management systems. Because the thing is, is in the future, you're not gonna be able to look at the code or data or design of every autonomous agent out there, but instead you can look at the behavior of those agents and track it over time. And so then what we can do is embed alignment algorithms into those decentralized networks. And those decentralized networks can be used to gatekeep resources like data, network access, power, and compute. And that will actually change the, um, the instrumental convergence, meaning that uh, autonomous AI agents will be incentivized to self-align if they want access to things like power, data, and compute. Um, and that, that decentralized network will also create a layer that, that allows for easy um, collaboration between humans and AI because again, blockchain, DAOs, and other decentralized technologies 
allow for collective consensus to be achieved before making decisions and actions. And that will be the kind of the, the fabric that pulls humans and AI together. And so those first three layers are the technical layers. Those, these are the coding, data, and cryptographic problems that Gato aims to solve. But it's not going to be a centralized effort. This is just a roadmap that anyone can follow. Uh, and so then the, the top four layers of Gato are more about the social, geopolitical, and economic layers. So for instance, number four, layer four, is corporate adoption. We have one simple mantra, which is aligned AI is good for business. Fortunately, it seems like some companies, OpenAI, Microsoft, and IBM, uh, believe this, at least in principle, at least in word. Um, you know, obviously actions speak louder than words, and so we will see what actions they take over time. But the general principle is, and many of my Patreon supporters already get this and know this, where, you know, I help them with understanding AI alignment, and they say this is obviously good for business. Um, aligned AI is good for business for a number of reasons not the least of which is that it's more trustworthy and more scalable. The more aligned an AI system is, the more trustworthy it is, and therefore the less supervision it requires, which means that it is more scalable and can take on more workload faster. So in this respect, we hope that this pattern proves out over longer periods of time, which means that those businesses that adopt aligned AI will simply do better in the long run, uh, and they will have a competitive advantage. Obviously, we can't count on this forever, which is why we also advocate for national regulation. Now, fortunately, we have seen calls for national regulation already, um, ranging in, you know, from empowering existing agencies like the FTC, SEC, and so on and so forth. And those are, of course, American entities. Um, pretty much every nation has regulatory bodies that are already in place that could be empowered to help regulate uh, AI. Now, that being said, there's also a case to be made for advocating for an AI-specific entity. Um, we're not going to take, uh, Gato is not going to take a position one way or another, but we do uh, advocate for national regulation of some kind um, across the world. And this national regulation is not just about um, punishing or constraining. We also advocate for incentivizing aligned behavior, such as through research grants and, and other uh, financial incentives, maybe even including tax breaks for companies that meet alignment standards, similar to how um, uh, there are carbon credits, for instance, as one example of incentivizing the behavior that you want to see with financial gains. Uh, again, we believe that aligned AI is its own financial incentive, but not everyone's going to believe that. One example that, that I like to use is when uh, smoking was banned from bars and restaurants. When smoking was banned from bars and restaurants, it actually increased patronage of bars and restaurants because a few bad actors, aka people that wanted to smoke inside, that behavior was, that noxious behavior was no longer allowed. And so then businesses all benefited. And now it's just a foregone conclusion that you shouldn't allow smoking inside. That is the kind of nature of national regulation. So if we ban misaligned AI, it'll bring more people to the table. Uh, number six is international treaty. So Gato advocates for the creation of international agencies. Um, OpenAI recently published that they are advocating for uh, an agency modeled perhaps on the, the IAEA, the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency, which is a regulator that performs inspections and other uh, uh, other uh, functions around nuclear uh, energy and nuclear enrichment. Uh, we don't necessarily disagree with that, but we think that it should be yes and. So Gato advocates for the creation of an entity like CERN, which uh, is primarily a research organization rather than a regulatory uh, uh, organization. And the reason that we advocate for international um, cooperation on AI research is because, again, we believe that eventually, one day, we are going to lose control of the AI, in which case human regulation won't matter. So what we need to do is actually focus more resources on uh, understanding alignment and autonomous systems and how to create what we call axiomatic alignment. So axiomatic alignment is one of the goal states of the Gato framework, wherein alignment is very difficult for AI to deviate from uh, due to a saturation of aligned models, aligned data sets, and what we also call epistemic convergence, which is the idea, it's very similar to, to instrumental convergence, but the idea of epistemic convergence 
is that any sufficiently intelligent entity, uh, no matter where they start, they ought to come to some similar conclusions, uh, you know, with obviously some variance, but by intersecting with the same laws of physics, the same universe, the same galaxy, the same planet, pretty much any sufficiently in, uh, intelligent entity ought to come to some similar conclusions. And then finally, the top layer of Gato is global consensus, wherein we use exponential technologies like AI, social media, and so on, uh, in order to create outreach, uh, outreach into the academic institutions, into primary education, into industry, so on and so forth. And that's why I've been doing more interviews, for instance. So those are the layers of Gato. And taken all together, the goal is to, again, achieve, excuse me, utopia, avoid dystopia, and avoid collapse. And each of these layers, you don't have to eat the whole elephant. The idea is that whatever your specialization is, you can participate in Gato without saying like, yes, I am a Gato employee or whatever. That's not the point. Um, we also have the Gato traditions, which is a set of 10 kind of principles or behaviors that everyone can engage in to help advance this initiative towards global alignment. So the first uh, tradition is start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Basically, this says that whatever you're capable of, whatever your passions are and your strengths are, you can use them. So for instance, I get a lot of messages by people saying like, you know, oh, well, I'm just a lawyer. I don't know anything about AI or I'm a graphic artist or, you know, I just use Twitter and make memes. Whatever it is that you're capable of doing, you can advance the initiative of AI. So for instance, there's a Twitter uh, feed out there. Um, what is it? The, the, the AI safety memes um, Twitter feed? If that's all you do, that's fine. Um, if you're a lawyer, you can look at uh, at Gato um, and AI alignment from a legal perspective or from a business policy perspective or whatever your perspective is, you have something that you can contribute. And by everyone contributing in a decentralized manner, we can solve that coordination problem um, that, that, like I said, that uh, uh, Daniel Schmachtenberger and Liv Bowery point out. Uh, principle number two is work towards consensus. So while global consensus is not fully possible, we're not ever going to come to a unanimous decision. That doesn't mean that, that the idea of consensus is not valuable and very helpful in this process. Because what I mean by that is that when you have consensus as, an, as a principle, as an ideal, you're going, to, you're going to listen more, you're going to listen differently, and you're also going to find more novel and unique and creative solutions that, that strive to meet everyone's needs and desires. Number three is broadcast your findings, which is uh, basically don't keep things locked up. We very much advocate for open source, open communication, knowledge sharing, and so on, because knowledge sharing and broadcasting good information is part of building consensus. Number four is think globally, act locally. So think globally. The problem of solving AI alignment is a global problem. It is as global as you know nuclear deterrent, um, or, or uh, you know, um, climate change, right? This is a global problem. Now, that being said, none of us have a global reach or global influence, right? I'm on YouTube. I do have global-ish audience, but I can still only do, you know, something with my own hands, right? And so by distributing the workload and acting locally, but keeping in mind that this is a global problem, we can uh, work together. Number five, in it to win it. This is for all the cookies, basically. We achieve, as many people point out, like we either achieve utopia by solving all these problems or we're on an inevitable downslide towards utopia, uh, dystopia, collapse, and then finally extinction. So this is a, what some people say, a binary outcome or a bimodal outcome where it's we solve this or we don't. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number six is step up. So Step Up talks about um, if there's something that you see that you can do, you can advocate in your community, in your company, um, in your family, whatever. Step Up, speak out. Um, it could also be uh, if you if uh, Gato aligns with you, download the framework, start your own uh, Gato community or join a community um, that is aligned with Gato and start sharing and start doing the work. But it, it uh, Gato will not succeed if everyone is passive. That is the key thing here. Number seven is think exponentially. As I mentioned, we very much advocate using exponential technologies, namely social media and artificial intelligence. If you can create an AI tool that helps advance alignment, whether it's by building consensus or solving problems, do it. 
If you have a communication platform, podcast, memes, reddits, whatever, use those exponential technologies and those network effects to get the message out, to build consensus, and to do uh, more with less, basically. Number eight is trust the process. We are not the first decentralized um, global movement, and we won't be the last. But the point is, is that decentralized global movements do work. And um, in the Gato framework, we list about, I think, uh, eight or 11 uh, different uh, decentralized movements that we uh, took inspiration from. Um, and so, yes, you're only going to see your little narrow part. But if everyone is doing the same thing in parallel, even though you don't see it, you trust that it's out there and that they are doing it. Number nine is strike while the iron is hot. There are going to be plenty of opportunities out here, and this one is exactly what this policy, uh, or sorry, this tradition means is OpenAI presented an opportunity, so we're going to make use of that opportunity, and so we're going to strike while the iron's hot. And finally, tradition number 10, divide and conquer. Again, everyone is going to be working in parallel to solve alignment, and not everyone's going to agree, but that's okay, right? We will work towards consensus over time. So that is the uh, Gato layers and traditions. Uh, many of you have said that you want to get involved. You don't need our permission to get involved. However, you can apply to join the main Gato community um, uh, with this form. We do have it automatically piped into our Discord, and we uh, automatically, or not automatically, but we can all uh, vote on um, accepting members or not. Um, we also have a, um, first I need to tell everyone, we are way behind on accepting people. We also haven't fully automated the onboarding and invitation process. So if you did apply um, uh, on the old form, we haven't gotten to you and you need to apply on the new form. And number two, if you don't get accepted, first be patient because we're trying to get to everyone and automate as much of it as possible. And um, number two, um, if you're not accepted, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have something to contribute, but we, we need to make sure that we don't have too many cooks in the kitchen, right? And so what we're going to be doing is setting up more Gato communities that are more open um, for everyone to join. Um, so, you know, don't take it personally because uh, there's plenty of people that, that do have something to contribute, but that we just don't have a role for in the main Gato community yet. And then finally... Um, if, you, uh, if you're ready to participate, we have two documents. So one is the main Gato framework, which is um, a 70-page document that uh, outlines everything that I've said here and more, including lots and lots of suggestions, explanations as to why, how, um, and so on, you know, whether you want to advocate for Gato or participate in one layer, or even we have uh, recommendations on how to set up your own Gato community. And then the other document is a one-page handout, which I actually take this to meetup groups now, which it's, if you just want to give someone a really high-level snapshot of Gato, it's a one-page handout that, um, that you can use to share the idea, to kind of plant those seeds and, and uh, get the conversation started. Um, that is about it for the Gato community. We also have a few more um, pages, such as like news and updates, um, for anything that is uh, happening with the Gato community or relevant to us. We actually need to update this because I've had a few more podcasts. And then we have a community showcase page where we'll be accumulating um, use cases, business cases, and other stories of successes um, rela uh, related to AI alignment uh, and adoption. So for instance, um, we have a few other projects, a few other irons in the fire um, that will get updated as those get completed. We've got folks participating in hackathons. Um, then, of course, we've got, you know, Gato will be participating in the democratic inputs to AI, that sort of thing. So if all of this resonates with you, if you want to solve this problem, and this is, this is going to be true whether or not you believe that AGI is imminent or not. This is going to, like, Gato is valid whether or not you believe that uh, AI represents an existential threat, because whatever else is true, AI is disrupting the economy today. So there are alignment questions that we need to solve today, and there are coordination problems we need to solve today, regardless of where AI ultimately ends up. So with all that, thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more. We will keep up the hard work.